Welcome everyone, it is Dr. Lindner, and uh, in this uh, brief video, we're gonna be doing an introduction to anatomy and physiology. That's what we're here to learn about, and you will be learning quite a bit about it. But before we get into anatomy and physiology, um, it's important to understand what is anatomy and physiology. So when we look at the term anatomy, we're, we're really talking about structure. When we're talking about physiology, we're talking about function. Uh, there are many anatomy and physiology books really called structure and function. Uh, when we talk about anatomy and we look at human structure, we can look at it macroscopically and we can look at it microscopically, right? We can look at it with the naked eye and analyze the human body and study it, or certain things we can look at their structure through the microscope, like looking at cells and tissues of the human body. We can't see that with the naked eye, but we can certainly look at their structure under a microscope. Physiology refers to the functions. So, when we look at a joint like the shoulder joint or the hip joint and we notice that it's like a ball socket that structure of the ball and socket tells us how that joint is going to move which may be different than an elbow joint or a knee joint that's like a hinge joint like a hinge of a doorway that opens and closes or flexes and extends so Structure determines function. Structure determines function. When we look at structure, we can look at, you heard me use the word cell before, looking at things under the microscope or microscopic anatomy. That's gonna examine things like the cells and even molecules. When we study the cell, C-Y-T means cell. So when we see cytology, that's the study of the cells and their structures. When cells come together, they make tissues. When cells come together, they make tissues and the term histology is the study of the tissues. So we have cytology, the study of cells, and histology refers to the study of tissues. And we're gonna spend quite some time, and I will send out probably through announcement messages, some videos that I've made of the cell because there's just not enough time during the week to go over the cell and the different parts of the cell. So I have pre-recorded many of these uh, videos that you can view to help you study. And thank goodness, you know, you can speed things up, you could slow them down. So if it's a 40 minute lecture and you speed it up twice as fast, you can knock it out in 20 minutes, right? Okay, so you heard me say just before that cells come together to make tissues. We said that cells come together to make tissues. But what is it that makes up cells? We have to go this way, look at number one. We're talking about chemicals or chemistry or biochemistry. And this could be atoms. We're talking about carbon and hydrogen and oxygen and nitrogen and phosphorus or phosphates. So these things help make up chemistry. And you will also learn through the readings this week, when you learn about proteins and carbohydrates and fats, you will learn that what differentiates a carbohydrate from a protein or a fat is how these are organized, right? Again, how these are structured, how the carbons and the hydrogens and the oxygens, and is there even a nitrogen involved? 
right? With carbohydrates, we don't have nitrogens. But with proteins, we do have nitrogens. They're part of the amino acid. So chemicals, and when I think of chemicals in terms of our health, I think of biochemistry. When I think of biochemistry and health, I think of nutrition. And when you learn about the human cell and we talk about the cell membrane, which is that outer barrier of the cell, it is made up of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. And that's why it's really important not to eliminate food groups from your diet. You know, some people say, I'm on a low fat diet. Some people, I'm on a, I'm on a low carb diet. Some people say, I eliminate fats from my diet. Um, not a wise thing to do. There's a bunch of fads and believe me, Besides being a doctor of chiropractic, I am also a nutritionist, and I'm well aware of all the different fad diets out there. I'm well aware that people think that this diet is superior to that one, and if you're a vegan, that's better than paleo. Paleo think it's better than ketogenic. Ketogenic think it's better than veganism. If you're a pescatarian, fruitarian, Mediterranean diet, I've, I've heard them all. Believe me, there is not one that's better than the other. However, however, there are some diets and nutrition that work better for certain individuals than others. There are people that build up antibodies to vegetarian diets, and there are people that build up antibodies to ketogenic diets. I've seen it happen. So you have to remember that we all have unique biochemical individuality. And what may be good for person number one may not be good for person number two. So there is not a way that humans should be eating. Despite how good the salesperson may be in communicating the story as to why it should be paleolithic or ketogenic or vegetarian or vegan or paleolithic. I mean, everyone does a great job. Most people have some sort of skin in the game when they're promoting a form of a nutritional diet. But healthcare practitioner, I can tell you, it's the right tool for the right job. As long as you feel well and you function well with a particular diet, then that is right for you. And it may not be right for you 20 years from now. People say, well, I used to be able to eat this all the time, and now I can't, right? So when I think of chemistry, I think of biochemistry biochemi and finding the unique and right degree of balance for each individual in terms of carbohydrates and proteins and fats. And it changes at different stages of your life. Everything changes at different stages of your life. Okay, so chemicals come together and chemicals are also structure. Look at DNA, deoxyribose nucleic acid. This is a double helix. It's structure and it determines function. So when chemicals come together, they make cells. Cells come together to make tissues and then tissues come together and make organs. In this case, we're looking at the stomach. And then the stomach comes together with a bunch of other organs, like in this picture, the small intestine and large intestine and pancreas and liver. And these organs work in harmony together in synergy to help digest and break down food. So when you have a bunch of organs working together, then organs come together to make systems. And there are 11 different systems within the human body. And you've heard of some of these systems. The digestive system, the respiratory system, the reproductive system, the primary system, the muscular system, the skeletal system, the endocrine system, right? The neural system. The immune system, the integumentary system for the, for the skin, hair, and nails. So we have so many different systems. And when these 11 systems come together, now it creates the crowning creation of all called the organism. If you are imbalanced in some way, if we go back to the chemicals and your amount of fat or lipids are off, if your chemistry is off, then the way the cells form are off. And if the way the cells form are off, then the tissues start to become distorted. And if the tissues become distorted, then the organs structure start to become distorted. 
And if the organs start to become distorted in their structure, then the systems start to malfunction, right? Because structure determines function. Good place to take our first break. We'll see how everyone is doing at this point.